So what I decided to do to, is just to play with some composition sizes, just to explore an idea for uh, a mock book cover project. Um, and just break that down, walk you through that thought process. And if anybody has any questions, ask art related other than that I think I'm just going to play around with some sketches no no fancy painting today tuning in to see me paint robot skulls or something I'm gonna go off on that now just do some loose chat Oh, my audio is breaking up. Doesn't appear to be any sound. Like testing, testing. Oh, yeah, it's back. Still breaking up a case. Oh, great. no, there is no sound. There it. No, there is sound. So. Down, don't worry. Okay. All right. So either I am completely mute on your guys' end, or somebody's got a really bad sound card, something like. That. But uh, anyway. Okay. So, this chat window here, my second screen. Perfect. All right, great. So, something stuff together. Um, so I have a brief that I, I made up here. And so when I start off an illustration project, depending on the, um, depending on the specs that I get if somebody were to say okay it's for a magic card or some kind of trading card illustration or what the dimensions of the piece are what the part what the what the actual product is get your words right here um if it's a card then that's got a certain it's got certain dimensions that have to be uh, adhered to if it's a book cover then I would have to find out whether or not um it's just a front cover or a wraparound cover and I tend to get a lot of wraparound covers so I have my uh, a, a whole Photoshop file just set up ready to go with um, with the, the dimensions the layout for a, a wraparound book cover so like we can see here that like you can see the grid lines and all that. So these lines indicate the spine of the book where the title would go. So nothing really of importance is going to go in this spot here. I'm not going to drop a face in there or anything like that uh, or part of a body or kids running or something crazy. Um, and then I've got these red lines here which are really meant to show where the cover could potentially be cropped, right? This is room for bleed. So, you know, I'm not going to put somebody's hand, thumb, and all that stuff anywhere near here. Um, no kneecaps, nothing weird, no weird crops, because anything that you put over here, especially like a shoe, you have a shoe, it could get cropped off completely and then it looks like you didn't know what you were doing when it's fine when it you know that cover is finally printed um so my idea for for this is uh, 
like a sci-fi sci-fi novel and i'm dealing with a a snowstorm on a on a distant planet so i want to have the idea that there is a um alien of some kind some kind of um alien symbiote attached to um an astronaut like for survival or something like that during the middle of this snowstorm um so uh i want to have the idea that just put so we want to have I'll push it right here book cover i'll just put them like right along the spine here just for future reference so i want to have um a snowstorm I want to have a stroke alien slash slimy thing um maybe shipwreck slash crash site so whenever i'm composing a piece these key words are what keep me grounded, keep me focused on um, what it is I'm trying to do an illustration for. So I don't go wild and just start tossing in stuff that isn't being asked of me to do. Um, so I want to have the idea that the alien is, I don't know. Kind of like if if you guys are familiar with the old horror film The Blob, not like it's eating the person, not ingesting the astronaut, but kind of wrapping itself around the body. So I have to figure out uh, what that looks like. Maybe the alien, maybe the astronaut, astronaut. Horrified. Riff. By, you know, what's happening. So we have this, we can have this relationship, this action that takes place between these, between the astronaut and the alien with the narrative of there being a crash or something in the background. Um, and go from there. So those are my notes. And from here, I just start scribbling around with some basic shapes until I find something that I like. Um, I don't know how interesting this would be, since it's not blood and guts and or close-ups of nostrils and stuff like that. But um, this is my this is where I start out. So check the comments. Uh, so everybody can hear me. Hello, Patrick. Look up slimes from Dungeons and Dragons for reference. I don't know if I want to go fantasy slime like that. I'm thinking more like Venom from Spider-Man. Venom symbiote kind of feeling. That kind of thing. What if... What if Venom was wrapped around you for warmth? I don't know. <laughs> so let's see what we can come up with. Um, I usually like to start off everything in line. Um, probably trying to establish the environment first. I don't know how well this will appear on screen but I guess it's coming up saying what about the fish from deep sea the blobbish pinkish fish yeah like um that could work too um 
That could totally work. I think that would be fun to do uh, for an, another stream is to have you guys call out um, keywords and then try to compose something based off of the, the things that you, you guys come up with. No matter like how ridiculous. <laughs> Draw a guy with a plunger stuck on his face. I don't know. So then the back cover of the book is usually where they would put text telling you about what the book is going to be about, potential barcode information. So I'm thinking about all of that right now. Um, so I'm not thinking about putting anything crazy back in this area. Um, but then maybe... on maybe we start off with it they're looking like there's footprints in the snow back here set footprints that lead us into the foreground of the composition where there could be some shape. Um, title of the book would be here. Author's name. So we know that we pretty much have this much space to work in um, for the composition. And unless we cheat and do something where the character is larger in the composition, and where in, in that case, the character's head would end up breaking through or overlapping the title of the book. Um, but you don't commonly see that. If anything, it might overlap just a little bit over a key or over a letter or something, but usually. Where I, where I put this basic shape is about where it would be. So before I get into adding any kind of details, guns, smoke, crazy spaceships and all that stuff, I'm thinking about basic shapes and whether or not this entire composition is tilted leaning back toward the back cover or if it is going to be tilted with the back cover as if she's coming or he or she or the astronaut is coming down the mountain side of a mountain or going up the mountain something like that so I don't know how you guys compose stuff or when you're working out ideas for your own artwork but if you're just starting off by drawing this detailed face and then moving out from there and trying to figure out what the piece is going to be after you've already rendered a head, then you're kind of doing it backwards. And uh, it's kind of like putting furniture on the grass and then trying to build a house around it. Like, figure out what the house is going to look like first. So this is what that's, this basically is, is me trying to build a house. That makes sense. So, like, I'm thinking like a billow of smoke trail or something like that can flow from the back. Over to the front. Footprints in the snow.
I would have to get reference for like what storm clouds look like. Snow. Snowy storm clouds. Audrey saying, I cry a lot. Then I ask Hamza to show me. That's my process. <laughs> hey, it works. Dang. I never thought about doing that. I should try that sometime. Just ball my eyes out and then just send Hamza a video and just say, fix this for me. Done. <laughs> All right. Um... So then there's the whole there's a the whole psychology part of this that I don't really convey when I'm doing this. I just I just do it. Um but I'll probably I do this to my students' work. I'll sit there and look at their sketches and then select it and then just sit there and rotate it, flip it, and do stuff like that to try to see like if the composition works better tilted more to the left or to the right and part of me is thinking that I want to have hmm all right so this one I'm thinking it's going to be maybe she's maybe I'm gonna say it's a female astronaut maybe she's falling down the mountain like that part of the character, that part of the story where the character is supposed to be horrified or reacting to this alien, uh, the slimy alien symbiote that is like attached to it. Like what, how does she, how does she react? And actually take this idea, this over here, because this will be option two. Say so that's option one. Option two. It's coming down the mountain. So we're, we can really start to play with some perspective. And this feeling like, hmm. So, what if there's an avalanche coming, right? The whole back cover would be an avalanche. And maybe we have the character here. Kind of reacting some kind of way. suit on and that the great part about it being in the snow that I can cut the legs off of it right there say that the character is just immersed like they're knee deep in snow it's like into background other mountains, cloud. So all of the line work in the composition now is pointing in toward the front cover. Swooping clouds. All the angles are coming in here, right? Footsteps, snow, all that stuff. And so at this point, you either know that you have something worth exploring or 
not. Um, you know, this is where I would decide, does it read from a distance? And what does it look like if the feature is now attached? Um, the avalanche or the snow in the background on the back cover acts as a, almost like a narrative device that adds a little bit more tension to the moment. Like, not only is this person being attacked, but they could potentially be also about to be smothered. Um, so there's all of that. What does the alien stuff look like? Blob. And... Maybe, maybe this burst out of the snow, so we have snow. I also have to remember that this is the gutter, so there's nothing but the title of the book, company logo, and all that stuff that's going to be there. So I'm going to put any kind of action or mist. I guess this could just be like powder. Soft snow, fresh snow, bursting out of that. Wrapping its arm around the astronaut, the spacesuit. Gelatin body around stuff, junk. So where does the crash site come in? Could the actual ship, crashed ship, be here? Like the cause of the avalanche, be the ship that maybe exploded? This is about the at most detail I'm going to put, I would put on the back because, well, I'm also giving the client a ton of space in here to add their text. So, about that. And once I wrap this part up, then I'll just get into doing like a value study of this and see if it works and then move on to another idea for it. So we've it's like action lines, three flying out, which then causes this slide. Also wondering if if the alien is bursting out of the ground, what would that look like on the snow? Would there be like a puff of something, like it was pushing up the snow, then just like burst out? Maybe there's, maybe this is the hole. Kind of like, kind of like the old Bugs Bunny cartoons where he's like, burrowing underground and it creates, creates that dirt path. Please tell me I'm not the only one that watched Bugs Bunny cartoon. I don't know. Maybe I... You guys are all young. Saying Bugs who? The 
fetuses. I think that adds a little something to it. So it can burst out of the back, pass through the spine, right onto the person. So it's now space suit. Tony's saying, yeah, then they drop an anvil in his path and he smacks his head. Uh, sorry, you watched anime. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Um, I mean, all of those cartoons were made before my time as well. It's just that when I was young, we didn't have as many options. There weren't 24 hour cartoon networks. You, you woke up Saturday morning, you got your cartoon fix, and then you went outside. Outside? Outside? Nothing. Nothing anymore. Used to be cool stuff to do. And you just play Roblox and RPGs. Let's do space. Now, all of this thought process is something that I will toggle back and forth on, play with, until I find something that I can see. Now, once these bare bones, this is the skeleton of this scene, okay? Um, So I have a fairly good idea of what what I want to have happen. Um, I can see that all of the lines are coming into that one spot, the focal point of the composition. Um, and anybody that's watching this that is currently taking the the intro um, intro to concept art uh, course is going to get a a whole like two week earful on composition or concept art and illustration. So you're watching this and it's not clear to you why I'm doing certain things. Uh, you're going to get that information in the class already taken that class and you're like well that wasn't in my class um yes say that the clothing that this astronaut would be wearing something bulkier Space suity. Straps. I'm not going full. Um, I'm not going full sci fi with it. I want to try to ground this in some kind of realism. Or as far as the spacesuit goes, as far as the 
Let's see what this is. Snow. Texture. Probably turn. Ah, I'll keep. Let's see. I'm missing the I'm missing the chats here. Saturday morning cartoon. That's right. E jiggy, you know what time it is. Uh in France there we had huge censorship which made the dialogues hilarious. Oh <laughs> I used to get up at six AM for the CBS story break and then go from there until twelve. P. Jiggy must be like 35, 40 years old. CBS story break. <laughs> These kids don't know what that is. <laughs> That's commitment. So my, my cousin used to roll me out of bed 6 a.m. to watch Voltron. And yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> my cousin used to wake me up to watch Voltron and uh original voltron and um robotech before we before i knew anything about it being redubbed macross super dimensional fortress macross anything like that it was robotech oh. Do I think I'll have her like this? So when it comes to uh, doing a sketch for approval, for client approval, I should probably save this. There you go. Um, this is where I start with my line work and all that. Get a good, get a good design, get the good, get a composition flowing right and um then i will go into adding color so i've been on this for now i think i'll start working up the values for this
little extra reference on my second monitor. Spacesuit kind of thing. Or something that I've, I've sketched before. I have something to look at. And I wanna I have to remember those keywords from what I wrote down. I want that astronaut to feel to be horrified, to be upset. Um so I wrote down that she's looking at one of her arms in horror as the alien begins to take take over the arm so um that works out Let's see so that's kind of what i have going on here blobbing and bursting out of the snow so crack the helmet do i have the helmet look like it's flying off these are all questions I ask myself as I'm as I'm working. I just don't talk to myself like this. Chili smack, chili smack. Good morning. Good morning. Where are you? It's four o'clock in the afternoon. Must be on the other side of the planet. Goodness. Top of the morning, or should I say, good day? <laughs> I don't know. Where are you? Um. Is your reference? One to one, or are you using a bunch of different reference images? Australia, <laughs> that's what I figured. <laughs> Got enough Australia students to, to figure. Okay, it's like about six a.m. almost, almost, almost seven, something like that for you. Um, or are you using a bunch of different reference images to get what you want, like pose, suit, environment, angle, and so forth? Um. No, I just have the uh, an illustration, an old illustration of a spacesuit that I did uh, a long time ago, and uh, I'm just trying to like just sampling from that, really, like as far as the chest chest plate, as far as the pose goes. I mean, I've kind of done this particular pose and sketches life drawing classes and things like that so many times that I kind of I know what a horse stance looks like or somebody that would have their foot kind of in the snow and all of those baggy wrinkly folds that a, a, a spacesuit makes um I have reference for that stuff so I just don't know like with with Twitch's system here, I don't know how much of that I can just share because some of that is copywritten material. Ever, it's, it's not my not mine, so I don't know how I'm allowed to share that stuff. I can share this so. Uh, 
keep the lower half baggy. Well, I mean, so it's a mental image library. I mean, it's just repetition, honestly. It's just I've done this a lot, I do this a lot, and I do this a lot more when doing demos for my students. Um, so kind of like kind of like muscle memory at a certain point, something enough. Times that it becomes second nature. So, at this point, I have this pose. Okay, oh, let me finish the character's face. Help. I'm just going to make horrified straw. I mean, and at this point, this is where I would then want to go out and get reference for what her mouth, what expression on her. Establishing where the scene There's, I, I, I'm envious of the illustrators that get away with having their, their figure work. This is the end. After this stage of it, they would just clean it up. Splash some color on it. Call it a day. Texture. If 
So I'm gonna make it a black girl, a spacesuit, planet being attacked by a giant slithering slimy alien thing. I've never seen that. Say that the helmet is she holds. We're going to say it's a Class M planet. Trek nerds out there, you know what I'm talking about. Actually, on his face. Pure ref is really cool. Yeah, pure ref. Ref is dead. the alien, something similar to them, symbiote, or something else. Um. There you go. Tony knows what time it is. Last M. Right, so you figure she took her helmet off. She's like, oh. I'm good. Good to go. And blah! Whoa. Save that. All right, so now, all right, no helmet. At least she left the helmet on the ship. So dumb, right? Okay. Next step would be to get rid of that. Then start playing Photoshop like a piano and get to our value study. So, anybody that also taking the intro course um, has seen dabble value demos that oh man I didn't introduce the the stream welcome to advanced well welcome to the uh, CG spectrums illustration block I'm Eric Wilkerson um, we've been watching this for like an hour didn't know talking shame on you uh, <laughs> But yeah, so that's what I'm doing today. Sorry, anybody that watching and I don't. Who is this guy? What's what's his deal? Try through. Got snowstorm. So what does that mean? It means that most of this is gonna be shade. 
most of this entire composition is it's going to be values. Say. Shadow. Arm Shadow Chest. <clears throat> so then It's, it means she's in Canada, starting the introduction in an hour. I'll know what a put is. Look that up. Better not be something that makes me have to delete my internet history. I I'll tell you that much. Not. So every time you tried to use a color changing brush, I felt wildly out of control of my brush strokes and usually ended up switching back to a normal one after a minute or two. You mean the color dynamics? Turning on the color dynamics? Uh oh. I can't test my audio. All right, so desktop audio, video device. How about now? Should I speak louder into my mic? It's fine for Nikita. Maybe you guys got ham in your ears. Oh, I hear you now. There you go. All right. So I got no audio. I don't know what to tell you, man. How is it that some people can hear me and others can't? All right. There you go. The whole, the whole stream with just you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's back. All right, good. So, um, I don't know why audio mixer would be messing with my levels. I don't, I don't really touch it.
Uh, okay. Well, maybe you got to crank up your audio on your end, um, Mika. Not sure, sure what's up, but anyway, I'm glad you're here. Uh, welcome. Oh. I just thought about the fact that if I have the back cover with a spaceship exploding, then there's going to be like fire light or something like that. To, but then there would be a warm color against all of this snow, this white. So our eye. Would just go straight to the back so we can just have this be a smoke that works just trail on And last tail would probably be just for this block in uh, I, I don't like to do this, but I'm going to do it for the sake of uh, for the sake of the for the sake of time, just for this uh, for this comp. Um, and just come in here and just hit that snow with a motion blur. active snowstorm on a feed. Like if I were to do this in oil paint, I would have to dab in or flick white paint to a dry paint and take a wet and then take a dry brush and drag it across all of those like specks of white paint to create this feeling like blizzard going. But in Photoshop, you just dab it and then hit with a motion blur, and like a second later, you got snow. Cheating. Cheating, I say. All right, so that's one. Um,
<laughs> PG, wow, this developed quickly. Yeah, man, I don't mess around. <laughs> um, I mean, it's just the sketch, so... Uh, like, I'm not... This is this is it's this is the fun exploration stage of stuff. If it and if it works here, if it works at this stage, it reads at this stage, uh it'll work in in larger detail. Right? So the feeling that there's something, some wreckage going on in the background. There's snow. There's footsteps. So we could have a, and actually do a little path. Leading from that wreckage. Bob Ross put trees down so fast because he was using a fan brush. And a fan brush basically gives you those uh those leafy pine tree. I mean he ever he actually never really painted more than two types of trees either. It was either something that he could use the, the edge of a, a two inch, you know, house painting paintbrush flat, just tap it in. Or he used a, a fan brush, which oh, I have that here. I'll put this right camera close. So all of Bob Ross's stuff. Tap, 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 tap. He would just wiggle it around like this and get that effect. But it's also kind of like his signature. So if you try to paint trees, forest, or something like that with a fan brush, there's always going to be somebody go, Oh, you're painting happy little trees. Shut up. <laughs> uh, all right, so that's that one. I'm going to move on to another option for this. That's the values for that. Catch. Uh, I'm going to take this and this, duplicate it, because I like that pose. I'm not going to, I don't want to mess with it. But you want to try messing with angle. Try that and say that. Here, which color code? No, which is which? Change that hand. Because the thing with a lot of Sketching for illustration is that you want to give your client more than one option. You don't want to just put all your eggs in one basket and say, here you go. It's dope. This is the one. Just approve it so I can go to final art. Because they might say, uh, actually, we don't like it at all. Or can you change this? Can you change that? I thought you were going to give us more than one option. But if you do, 
give them like no more than three options then they might come to you and say we love the costume design or the expression on the face in sketch c and you put that character in sketch a or something like that um and it happens a lot so i'm just thinking now i want to have i want to do something with this other hand and then maybe imply that she was going uphill instead of downhill so we're rising up from the background maybe we curve it around on like a hillside or something like that and just make this some vista going all the way back But we can still have this moment. Ah, there's with it. Shift it. Not about the spine. Happy little trees, teach us how to draw a happy little alien. Um, you give it really cute eyes, large eyes, a small nose, something adorable um, looking. Maybe some pointy ears that stretch out from its head, make them green. Put them in a potato sack and uh, drop that alien in a little floating baby basket. <laughs> Print money. Print money with it. Let's see. I still feel like we could do something with some kind of... Oh, right. What if there were Hmm. I'm trying to think of like what if there was some ancient temple or something like that. So maybe that's maybe that's sketch C. So we do the clouds, the storm clouds, all that stuff, the same thing from before. Swirling around her. And So that's the one thing with composing like this is you always want to be thinking about balance in the company. And if you're going to have all your angles and shapes and everything leaning toward focal point, in this case is the girl, putting any other large objects in the background have to be balanced in relationship to her. I'm just thinking out loud right now because like, I feel like there should be some kind of huge thing, monolith thing back here, but we would have to play with the scale Play with values so that this thing looks immense, but also really, really far away, like maybe there's trees, stuff like that, down out down here. Um, 
but does that is that necessary for the composition or does it or is it just extra detail to establish where she is when you're working on stuff that's you know this is something you have to think about you might end up staring at your piece for a while or walking away from it to go play some PlayStation and then you come back and you go I'm gonna get rid of that monolith I don't need it so Mika is asking did you start with a big thumbnail or a small one actually uh, Mika if you can if you're still watching and you can see this uh, this is what I started with I started with a bunch of squiggly lines and some indication of there being a crashed spaceship and then a big triangular shape for where I wanted to place the figure so once that was in place um, I started rotating and tilting stuff around until I found out what I wanted and then I just refined it to that point and it's still not even a lot of work but to be fair the background is going to be take place in the middle of a blizzard so there isn't really going to be that much to see other than the you know oh just thinking about that if it is in the middle of a blizzard there isn't going to be any hard light there isn't going to be any bright light hard shadows it's all going to be open So that would mean that all of this is softer. So for anybody that's seen the movie Interstellar, when they're on that ice planet, no hard shadows anywhere. It's all overcast. It's subtle. Um. Have the aliens and eggs like in alien films, but instead of eggs, like chunks of ice. But then if you thaw it out, you get what you asked for. Kind of like with the egg sacs from Alien, you really didn't know what was in it until you opened it. Even, even then, it's in a dark room, slime covering it and everything. So... Why would you stick your face in there? Why would you be in the room? Movies are. First time, first time that stuff happens, you survive it, you tell everybody. Tell everybody you know. Don't go in there. Don't go to that planet. Keep doing it. Um, Mika's saying, oh, maybe have some sort of broken structure in front of, uh, in front of her on the side of, the, shield her from the snow blasting, put her into this shadow. Hmm. Saying broken structure in front of her side, shield her from the snow, put her in tents shadow right but that intense shadow would be caused by a light source so in the middle of a blizzard 
where would that intense light source be coming from if not from an artificial light source like a spotlight or something like that and if you're going to do a spotlight then that would imply that there was somebody or a structure or or some kind of um i guess humanity or there's to be somebody there to be pointing that spotlight at her in order for there to be in order for her to be casting a shadow on the ground so that's the kind of thing that i have to be thinking about does that make sense to the narrative right and if not then you don't use it does then you say well how can there be a blizzard if there's an intense spotlight but then you could also say well what time of day is this but i also established that i wanted this to be a um a, a black girl in a space suit so for value contrast reasons i'm not going to put her against a dark background because i want value contrast so the only way to create that value contrast with having a darker background is to have some kind of artificial light source or have the entire scene be moonlit and moonlighting or rim lighting her from behind or lighting her from behind so that she's just carved out from that background and then play with the value contrast like that not technically a If the moon, well, no, but if it's a blizzard, there wouldn't be, it would just be. Ooh! Why does it have to be a blizzard? I don't know, you wrote it. All right. <laughs> um, maybe it smelled good, stuck her face in. What? Uh... Maybe the heat from the crash ship starts melting them. Okay. Could make the alien wrapped around her arm glowy. Hmm. Maybe not bright enough for a hard shadow, but cool light effects. Be cool. Good. Use those emergency flares for. <gasps> Yes! Emergency flares. Ferris, I didn't think of that. <laughs> so, we go back to... Go back to this one. This one. And then I can <clears throat> she got this.
creates that ominous lighting. This thing is completely Hey, Tony, thanks. And Shadow. Whoop. Oh, man. So then, any other ambient lighting? We we're not gonna say. We're just gonna say the snowstorm at night. We can still get it. Dang, man. All right. So that's that's a lot cooler than what I had. That's just All right. So then any other light that comes from here say that like the smoke that is rising up yes then that's that's my value contrast carving out her head works and then okay so then we say that around it has also got that light carving out so honestly like this whole front cover could be like red in the snow with a reddish tint so we could go <clears throat> It would transition from red to blue, right? Red to like a blue violet or leaning toward the background. You could still do the crashed ship and the snow. You have to turn down the capacity of that. That works. Cool. But the light source in the scene, the single, the main light source in the scene, not the overcast ambient lighting, but a um, an emergency flare. Okay, so then I see your emergency flare. I raise you additional emergency flares might have been stuck in the ground so that if somebody sees her they can get her put these flares back here almost like almost like we have to think about this like a breadcrumbs. Like these flares are not meant to be intense light, 
but they are meant to lead us, like connecting the dots, leading us to that point. Okay. All right. Thanks, Tony. Cool, cool idea. Um, and wouldn't she have a rope connecting her to the ship in the middle of a blizzard? You're overthinking this stuff, man. <laughs> rope? Ugh, that's just silly. No, I mean, uh, yeah, she could be tethered, but you could say the same thing for any sci-fi film like should they not go in there or shouldn't they just stay on the ship <laughs> but they never do they never do um they only have an hour of oxygen shouldn't they turn back or if the alien spaceship is about to crash down and land on them should they run in the opposite direction or they should should they just turn left or right so that the alien ship doesn't smack them dead yeah, but then there's no drama. <laughs> um. Oh, Prometheus Burn. You know what? You know what time it is. That's right. The movie was horrible. <laughs> so. Yeah. I was all in on that movie until I'm like, where? Where's she going? <laughs> Where is she going? Why is she running backwards? Why? Just, just juke right. Oh, man. Never do. Whatever. I own the movie. Never took it out of the plastic. Part of my brain just says, don't do it, man. Don't do it. Once was enough. Do it. Um, um, run in the path of, a, of the giant donut. <laughs> right? <laughs> Hope you land in the hope the hope that you land in the middle of the hole and be like safe. Um Yeah, I mean she could have been out there like she could have been out here looking for ooh, that's one thing nobody mentioned. Debris. So if we go with that, we got to put like chunks of debris. Right? Like just embedded in the ground. So now there's. We have this clear signs of wreckage or something, right? Smash. Cool. Right. Um. So then, opposite version of that could be the daytime version. So we've got a night. This will be our nighttime shot, and this will be our daytime shot. Um, so we're not going to go with a blizzard. We're just going to go with a snowy background. And so 
It's all about the relationship between these. Everything else. Help. It adds to the story, but. I don't want her hand to just be hanging down. That, that's not dramatic. Have to be like a. Her hand would have to be doing something. Probably the exact same thing I had before. Fringing, ripping. Something. Um. What would be if she's screaming because Cindy wrapped around Ooh. How would we imply that? Because we don't actually see the hand. We have to actually see fingers. So there would have to be... But... Remember... It's not... This is PG, not R. R. Have to be like hand. Palm, palm side up, sticking out of the ooze, like just completely pulverized her hand, her whole arm. Damn, that's mm, sorry, that's that's messed up. So. Uh, Saying you love a field of good debris, do. Um, are you guys talking about lens? Are you still got you? You guys still talking about flares? Twenty to forty. I don't know if anybody would do that during a blizzard, but I guess if you had an insane amount of flares, pretty sure the snow would block the light from ships. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at least 20. At least 20. You know? Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> you guys are funny. So, let's see. What if there was part of the alien coming out of her collar through her sleeve and clinging? Side of her face. <sighs> if it's all inside her suit. Oh. oh. Wow. I mean. So here's here's the difference between a uh, book cover illustration and this being like a keyframe illustration or keyframe concept art for a movie is Tony you could do all of that stuff that you're talking about where it's running up inside of her costume and gripping to her face and she's like trying to peel herself away and she's screaming and all that stuff but is that going to sell a book or is that going to freak people out? Somebody might pick that up and go, that's kind of freaky. And it runs the risk of chasing away a potential customer. But if you give them just enough to go, ooh, I wonder what's going to happen next, then you've done your job, right? So, uh, but yeah, if it was like, if it was just a keyframe, you could go nuts and it would just be like ooze, like trying to reach its way right up into her nose. 
or like curling, wrapping, curling, about to curl into her mouth. Like any orifice it could find. Oh man, that's nasty. There was a movie, what was the name of that? Ruins? The Ruins? Something like that. The, all these teenagers came across this like South American temple. The vines? I don't know what. But like one by one, the vines and stuff in the temple like started to grow over them and into their bodies and just devoured them. Messed up. That was one of those one and done films. You see it and you can't unsee it. There's no point in watching it again. I don't think I'm going to break her own. That's kind of messed up. I think just having it is implied that there is an arm in there because you don't see her arm anywhere else. And that she's reacting to looking dead at this. So the connection is there between the two. Um, but. Could have. There be a ship. Some kind of. Docking platform or something like that. ship shuttle fancy um, So then let's try something completely different. And play with the camera angle. Have her play with the idea of everything sweeping in. So, see how this works. So, Mika, if you're still watching, this is where it starts. I don't, I don't get fancy with trying to do any kind of real details until I've figured out the composition in its basic format, simple shapes. And if I find that it's not working, at this stage, I'll just delete it and start over again. Because it's kind of like when you start, when you when you do this enough, um, kind of like I hate the sound. Uh, you can start to see the composition unfold in your head. After a few strokes, you kind of know if you're going in the right direction. Like if you, uh, like a composer putting down a couple of notes, and, you know, like playing a piano, and you know where you're going to go after the first few. Notes. It's either going to work or it's not. just go delete. So maybe we change the camera angle title of the book here to change the camera angle so up and on right here we have more of a high level shot we do it I love no I have to do it let's try it where we're looking down at the so we have the villain the slime thing here she is here so monster larger action arm is attached got that screen 
she's trying. Knee deep in the snow. Built back. Do we still show wreckage? Shipwreck? How much of this? Is Round versus like cliff, something like that. go off into the valley or And the thing is, is that you can do a ton of these. Work them out, see if it works. If it doesn't, then no loss. Flares can also be there. Couldn't we still use the flares? Can there be a flare here, where the, now the whole scene is lit by that? Option as well, and then have the breadcrumbs lead us. That point um so phew. star you're saying the star of the book cover feels like the alien protagonist in this one yeah and and the reason for that is because it's puts the hero in an inferior position we're looking down at the hero. We're looking down at the astronaut. So, like, if you look at images where like, Thanos is in a scene, he's looking down at heroes. But then there are also several instances in the Avengers films where you are looking up at the villain, almost like he's meant to... He can, there's there's this conflict where it's all psychological where you're meant to see him as immensely powerful right so you're saying oh right angle of the camera makes more cinematic yep so what I'm doing here what I'm playing around with um is done in filmmaking all the time cinematographers use it all the time like how do you how do you compose the scene so that you get the most impact psychologically so like i love watching the last two in uh the last two avengers films especially because of the amount of screen time they give to thanos because if you watch it Half the time you're looking up at him like he's the hero. Messed up. But <laughs> so like part of your brain is like, you know what? Thanos is kind of right. You could do with a like a lot less humans or a lot less of everything, right? But then another part of you is like, that dude is crazy. And then if you watch it long enough, you start to you can start to pick and what like point out. Where in the movie they are trying to make you feel something. Even in the even in the intense action scenes, why do they choose a certain camera angle? Right? So when he's when Thanos is toe to toe fighting the Hulk, your eye level. Right? For a moment. <laughs> so it's 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 I try to bring that understanding into this and so if we were to do this kind of thing we could actually have that creature 
oozing in from the back of her rising up. I don't know. It's it's an option. So when it comes to composing stuff, like you could quickly amass maybe like ten of these and then try to whittle it down to the top three and um and see what works. So um Mika's saying, oh yeah, the way they kept portraying Thanos was unsettling because he isn't really saying unnecessary things, but his violent actions are unnecessary and disgusting on a universal scale. Yeah. Yep. I mean, like the... What was the name of that, that Netflix show where the, the woman was telling you if, if something doesn't bring you joy to throw it out? kind of like that but on a universal scale he's like the universe doesn't bring me joy i gotta throw out half this stuff <laughs> and you go you know what you go for that man you go you go do that you do you just uh leave my family alone <laughs> you know? um but man let's see we've got we've tilted the composition we've had the uphill we've gone downhill looking down at the motion at the action I'm not particularly certain that I want to go with it with her at so try one more and see how that turns out so the other option would be to The other option would be to treat this like a portrait. We could just do this as a profile. How does that, like, how do you make that into a wraparound? If she's here. So, say we'll use Tony's idea coming up through the suit into her face. Have her They maybe have her like this, like she shock kind uh, of and feel that Bubble up. Round. All. Maybe curling around. As she's looking back this way, it's curling around and it's about to go straight into her. So then what do we say is going on back here? This doesn't allow it. This doesn't, this, having it be this close up means that whatever is back here is just a complete blur. Like you can't have this be in focus and then the background also be as crisp because it flattens out the image. So there would have to be this feeling of a depth of field, like a soft indication of background there. And it wouldn't even matter what it is. It would just all be a blur. 
So then you have to think, would the client go for that? Probably not, but it's an option that you know you you're giving them the the choice. Um, but then again, it doesn't have to be a big vista. We could change that and say that maybe this. And maybe this is a door. Right? So maybe this is like the door to the cargo bay or something like that. It's just like washing strips. Whatever light is hitting her is coming from this area in here and you know this is the gutter so we're not going to put anything overly detailed there can be just some hint of a landscape all of this can be dark touch screen computer handprint palm reader whatever there there can be some emergency red lighting illuminating this side of her face or body which would make all of this just like red and glistening. So two hours, that's like three rough ideas or four rough ideas for where I could take the composition. Um, you know, before I think about color, before I'm thinking about all of that stuff, I'm just trying to make sure that the composition itself leading me to where I want to look first and you know that that done what did the client want for the cover horrifying so like the 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 creature attaching itself to the uh to the astronaut is the is kind of the focal point is the, the most important element to the story so um yeah so in 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 that sketch in this fourth sketch here the alien is maybe i don't know at this point if it would be creeping up on her you'd probably know so it would probably have had to had been on her and is maybe i don't know maybe it's forcing her to go outside maybe she's returning it to its home planet who knows Know, whispering in her ear or in her ear controlling her every action like like in Star Trek or something um yeah Mary Marie Kondo yep just toss it maybe it's friendly it is friendly when we when friendly <laughs> maybe it's friendly I, I think I think a lot of aliens are fr are are friendly. They're just misunderstood. You know, those uh those H R Giger aliens. They just wanted to play. They didn't know that you know, if they played with us too hard, we would burst. Well, everybody doesn't have acid for blood. They came to play, and we came shooting at them. Maybe they, maybe they took offense, and like we're like, well, you started it wanted to play kickball and you started shooting at it mofos anyway so that's what i got uh today um so oh that's right so i've been uh reminded to to say that um if you liked this video and want to see more of the same uh smash that like button and uh give us a follow Actually, nobody t from the school told me to say that. My daughter told me to say that because you're not cool unless you tell people on YouTube to smash that like button. Smash it right now. I dare you. All right. <laughs> All right. That's what I got. So um, uh, you guys have a good weekend, and I will, uh, I will talk to you later. All right.